have with man. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And God saw, fifth verse, that the wicked of man, wickedness of man was great in the earth. Brother Hughes, that's the exact opposite of righteousness. Wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast. And the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Let's read something else in Matthew 24, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, that before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so also, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. I like to preach for a little while about the days of Noah. The Bible said it's going to be that way again. We're going back to Noah's day, folks. This world is going back to Noah's day. You talk about going back, I mean they're going back a fair piece. All the way. Jesus said it. He said it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah. Amen. And when they go back to the days of Noah, they're going back for judgment. They're going back to judgment. This will not take very long talking about the days of Noah. I want you to notice about the days of Noah. He said every thought and imagination of men's heart was only evil continually. Sound like the headlines on your newspaper? Sound like what you was reading about today in the morning news or the evening news or what have you? Sound like a late report from Paul Harvey about the situation? Oh, it's pretty well already in the bag that O.J. is going to walk. Amen. Yeah, they'll stir up so much smoke, I mean, they'll throw, throw such a smoke screen that it'll be hard to even see O.J. when they get down to this trial and the jury finally gets it, amen. They'll be seeing Furman, they'll be seeing the, the police force, the United States of America, they'll be seeing everything except the one that's guilty. You'd think we was trying the Los Angeles Police Department. We're not trying that Los Angeles Police Department. We're not trying the law enforcement agencies in the rest of the world. We're not, uh, uh, we're not even trying the drug enforcement uh, people that uh, invaded Waco. Uh, amen. The, the Bidco compound. Uh, amen. No, no, no. That's not what they're trying in Los Angeles. But they're going to lay such a smoke screen. They hope that uh, O.J. will walk. Amen. Oh, yes. What's wrong as America feeds on that? I was listening to a talk show trying to stay awake coming home from uh, Export, Pennsylvania in the spring. And this, this man was asking this man, this woman, questions on the telephone. This news, or this uh, uh, DJ was, uh, or a radio announcer was. Uh, amen. And he asked this guy and this woman about everything about O.J. They knew his wife. They knew his mother. They knew all their families. They knew every fact that you could imagine about them. Amen. And finally, they asked 
who Solomon's father was. Amen. And they couldn't answer it. Amen. They couldn't answer the most simple question in the Bible. Amen. Who Solomon's father was. Amen. But they knew everything about everything in the world. We're going back to Noah because we're in a battle for the mind. And the war is going to be won or lost in the minds of you and I. You don't think the Christians are in a battle in their mind? Amen. Remember that last preacher that went down? Amen. He was fighting a good fight. He was preaching holiness conventions and holiness meetings right up to the very last. And then something happened. I'll tell you what happened. He threw in the towel. He lost the battle of the mind. He gave up. He lost courage. Amen. And he gave in. He didn't have to, but he did. And we don't have to, but a lot are. It's a shame to be lost even if you're a heathen. But it's even worse to go out of the house of God, out of a holiness church and plunge to the very depths of Satan from which many will never come back again. What happened to the people that have come and gone from this place of the holy and uh, gone down the drain and, and dove and plunged into deep dark sin? Yes. And some of them, as the writer in the book of Revelation said, they have known the depths of Satan. It's a terrible thing to go too far and stay too long. Amen. We've been bombarded by the media. Sin has been advertised so much and so long, you'd think that Lucky Strikes and Marlboro's have been tasting like ice cream. The way they advertise it. You'd think, uh, amen, that Budweiser beer and Bush Bavarian and Coors, uh, amen, tastes like grape juice fresh from the vine. No, it don't. Amen. It tastes like slop. And nobody ever liked it the first time they drank it. But curiosity got a hold of them and they plunged on out. And they tried it again and again until finally they turned around one day and they were hooked. Hooked on alcohol, hooked on nicotine. And something about them would never be the same again. Listen to me. You can listen to that barrage of hell and let your mind take it in. And it makes sin look good. And it makes sin look like it might taste good. And it says... Come on over and live a little. But once you cross over that line, something will never be the same in your life again. You'll wish for the days of purity that have come and gone. You'll wish for the days of innocence that have come and gone. And some way, somehow, even though you pray and seek God ever so well and ever so much and pray ever so effectively, there's a scar left on your brain that you wish wasn't there because you lost something. Cross over those lines, cross over those dead lines, go that direction and you'll be sorry till the day you die. Amen. Oh, yes. Virtue and virginity is a precious thing. But cross over those forbidden barriers and you lose something you can't ever get back. The longest day you live. The devil will make sin look good. He'll propagandize you. Amen. That don't sound like uh, too good a word uh, on the uh, uh, surface, but... Uh, uh, he'll do that. I mean, he's going to pull his seducing spirits, his most seducing, his most seductive 
Amen. And did you know the Bible said in the last days men would give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils? Amen. We've been victims of the constant grind of the media in either a more or a lesser uh, amount. Uh, amen. We need the touch of God on our lives. Without it, uh, we're not going to make it. We're in a battle for the mind. Amen. That's the kind of battle that the devil is out to win. Amen. Wicked imagination. They just went on eating, drinking, marrying, giving marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not. Did you know that if we listen to the devil, we listen to the world and give heed to the flesh and give in to the tip tar? That once we do, we lose our moral strength. America is losing something. They're losing moral courage. They're losing moral strength. They're losing the real reason for living. Amen. They've lost something precious. And they're blaming somebody else for what they've lost. Amen. Wicked imaginations. And those wicked imaginations are conveyed on the many inventions the Bible talks about. There, did you know the New Testament said there are many inventions? Never in all the history of time have we had more inventions reaching for the mind than we do today. Huh? And the amazing thing about it is, here's the ploy that the devil uses on our young people. If you don't experience, if you don't join the in crowd, if you don't enjoy it, you are not in. You're missing out. Well, praise God, I missed out on a lot of stuff. And I'm glad I did. Hallelujah. I've never been down to see the Reds play down at Bush Stadium, or down at Red Stadium, or over at Bush Stadium, St. Louis either, as far as that goes. Amen. And I'm glad I missed it. I've never been down to see the Bengals or the Bengals, and I'm glad I missed them. Amen. I, I tell you what, amen, they got many inventions today. Boy, they have to get you one way or the other. Amen. And the world says they're bored. The whole thing is they got more than they ever had before to look at, more than they ever had before to go to and, and to go in and to go uh, far. And uh, they're still born. They're like they were in the days of Rome. The sports got uglier and uglier and bloodier and bloodier. Amen. Until uh, they went to the arena and watched the gladiators fight to the death. Uh, and men and women, boys and girls, cheered on as one man butchered another. Amen. We're not too far from that. In our violence racked entertainment today, huh? That men feed on night and they, our children grow up on it until when they get to the adolescents and teenagers, they're already jaded. And if we're not very careful, we will have already lost the battle for their mind. And they're already looking another direction other than the Bible, other than the church, other than gospel preaching, other than old-fashioned, old-time religion, old-fashioned godly simplicity. Paul said, Amen, but I, 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 I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy, he said. Lest as the serpent beguile Eve, that he should beguile you from the simplicity. Amen. What is that? The simple rudimentary faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and a born again experience. If the devil can muddy the water around you and cloud up things around you and lay smoke screens around you and confuse you and get you to throw down your confidence for a little while, 
he's begun to win the battle of your mind. Don't let him do it. Praise God. Amen. Let's get back to old-fashioned simplicity and godliness. Let's give our minds a chance, bless God, by giving our minds a rest. Amen. And now I'm going to tell you something in this battle for the mind that you need to know. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ who in the presence of in, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as of walking according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We can't win this war in the flesh. We've got to summon other weapons. We've got to summon er other powers. We've got to summon other means of warfare. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Listen to this. You need to know this. Casting down imagination. When the devil throws one at you and threatens you with a ringer, hallelujah, cast it down by the power of God. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. Hey, they'll try to make you look dumb if you don't join in. They'll try to make you look dumb if you don't chime in. Amen. They'll even require children to read books that are filled with filth, like the uh, cuss book that they all that they uh, was required reading in the children's uh, <coughs> requirements in, in 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 school here in Hamilton. Amen. Uh, uh, <coughs> the m many many forty, I believe, about forty-eight cuss words. 45 times mice and men. Amen. Uh, uh, the book filled with cuss. They'll learn enough without it being required. Reading. Amen. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. You believe we can do it? You believe we can do it? We can bring into captivity every thought. You believe we're able by the grace of God to overcome in this warfare? You think we've got to throw in the towel and give up the fight and go down the drain? No! Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge or disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We need to go after this thing of keeping our minds pure with a vengeance, praise God. He said, be diligent, be sober, be vigilant, be sober, amen. Your adversary, the devil, goeth about as a rolling lion seeking whom he may devour, amen. I'm glad to say that many of our children have survived high school and college with their faith intact. Amen. I'm glad to tell you that many of them, praise God, made it through by a miracle of God with their faith intact. They held on to Jesus. They held on to the simplicity of the gospel. Hallelujah. Yes. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Is it a sin, Brother Collins, for an evil thought to come on your mind? No, it's not a sin no more than it is for the birds to fly over your head. Amen. 
But if that bird comes down and builds a nest in your hair, that's your fault. Amen. I, my mother was out working in the yard one day, and a bird flew down and pulled a hair out of her head for its nest. Amen. Now that's happened different times. Maybe there's somebody here that's heard of that happen. Amen. A bird uh, flew down and pulled a hair out of the head, but uh, he didn't hang around very long. Amen. The devil, he, he, sometimes the birds of the air in the Bible are t- typical of demonic av- ac- activity. They signal demonic activity. Amen. And uh, uh, the, the uh, mustard seed, some interpret uh, when the mustard plant grew up and got big, the birds of the air came and landed in it. Uh, amen. Even the devil took advantage of it and came and lit in its branches. I don't know, amen, when Jesus finally got to the synagogue in uh, 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 down at Capernaum, amen, uh, there was a devil-possessed man right in there, amen, and he cast the devil right out of him, brother. Brother Davis preached, how did he get in from this very pulpit? How did the devil get in? How did he get in the synagogue? I don't know, but he got in, and Jesus came on the scene just in time to cast him out. How many believe God's able to deliver from demonic activity tonight? Raise your hands and let's praise him. Thank you, Lord. How many believe that Jesus is able to deliver from the evil thoughts the enemy suggests in this day and hour? Amen. He's able to keep us immune. He's able to keep us separated. He's able to keep us, praise God, free from pornography. Come on. Amen. And ungodliness and wickedness. Uh, and, and, and keep the purity and the innocence uh, and the simplicity. Hallelujah. That we need. As God spoke to Brother Branham in his youth, he said, If you'll not drink nor smoke nor defile your body in any way, I'll show you my power. And use you mighty, mightily for my glory. Praise God. Let Jesus wash you. Let him cleanse you. Call him to play the powers of heaven. The weapons of the supernatural against the supernatural weaponry of hell tonight. Stand with me tonight and let's pray. Father, touch these lives, these bodies, these spirits. Help us to summon the weapons that you put at our disposal. Praise God to wreak havoc on the camp of the enemy and claim victory one more time in these last days. Thank God we can make it in Jesus' name. We can overcome in Jesus' name. We shall overcome in Jesus' name. Well, the first thing the Christian must watch is curiosity. Sometimes our curiosity will lead us into places that we ought not to go. Remember the enemy, one of his first weapons he uses is curiosity. If he can just let us, get us to go aside and look for a little while, amen, then he may well be on the way to having us hooked. Praise God. Don't bow to curiosity. Don't experiment. Don't turn aside from the straight and narrow. Let God keep you by his power and in his presence for his glory. Sanctified and set apart for the master's use. For revival and instrument of deliverance in our time. Let's come to this altar as they sing and let's pray tonight. Amen.